He tells me we're good to go. 1895 there as well. There is an 1895, but yeah. Which is which is an updated version of yours? I was under the impression, right, that they weren't going to be making the 1895. Anymore. No, they'll still they'll still make it. Well, it's a great machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been around a long time. The, the, the basics are right, the chassis is right and everything else. And what they've done is updated the boom a bit. How have they updated the boom then, Mark? Power track and all the tracking in the oars has now gone onto the inside of the boom. Yes. And the telly cylinders come onto the outside, basically for tree surgeons, so you're not going to catch trees, snag and pull the power track off the side. Okay, another thing I've noticed about this particular machine is that it looks as though the remote control is... Control yes. So you're not running the hoses, That's all it. the hoses all the way yeah. through. Yeah. Um, which is a huge advantage because it's less hoses. It so is It is a huge advantage. It has got its downsides as well in that you're using the same remote control for the base as the top. Why is that a disadvantage? I, I, I quite like the 2095, which has the, a remote unit, like the bigger machines. Yeah. There's the same unit already up there all the time, yeah. keeping them completely separate. Could I, in that case, so if I was in the basket yeah. on the 2095 yeah. uh, and I didn't want to be controlling the machine, could yeah. you then take control of it from down here? Yes. Right, yeah, okay. that's the beauty yeah. that you've got a same, you've got the same set of controls in the cage, identical unit, yeah. but instead of being radio, it's on wire. Yeah. And you can leave this unit down here. Yeah. Should something happen, you're in the cage, get incapacitated, something like that. I can grab this. Switch over, take control, I can operate the machine. Likewise, if you're doing something that requires two hands all the time, I can control it from down here. Yes. That's why I like to have controls and at top and bottom. The beauty of having it on a controller as well, as opposed to my current machine, which is sort of operated here. Directly. You can stand right back. You can stand back and you see everything that's going on. Yeah. But yeah. you can't do that with the 1895. How would you operate the 1895 from the ground? Just out of Right. Show you that. What you've got here is, you always have to have a set of ground controls. Yeah. yeah. So it is a little bit different, isn't it? It's a little bit different in that yours present machine has already got the, the levers on shore. Yeah. And here... Oh, they're nice, aren't they? Look at these. A little bit more refined. Yeah. So, same thing as yours, just a bit more refined. You don't have to... In fact, the selector bar is still there, even though you don't use it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, they're just... It's just a... They've come a long way. So the, the, the quality of the valve banks and the control systems has come a long way. Yeah. So whereas yours is purely mechanical, using hydraulics, yes. these are then the radio control when to using it down here operates these. Okay. So, as you know, my 1890 Pro is old. It's coming to an age where it needs being replaced. What would your recommendation be? Would it be another one of these or would that be a better machine oh. for me? That's a good one. I think for what you do, and then I would go the 2095. So can the 2095 still fit through a gap 800mm? Yes, mil because exactly the same width. Is everything. It's the same, it's pretty much the same chassis and everything else. Uh, it's slightly close to the floor when it's in its narrow state. So this but one. the beauty about the 2095 is, wherever that boom is now, yeah. It's 250 kilo capacity. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Whereas at the moment, you are on a variable load, yes. dependent on outreach. Yes. <laughs> uh, same with this. This is variable. Well, in a slightly different sense, in that rather than it being a load cell on the boom like yours is, this is doing boom angle and length. Yeah. So it's a bit more refined and it's a bit more precise. But out of the two, for the type of work you're doing, a bit more reach and whatever, you, and, the, and the, you've got materials, building maintenance, things like that. The 2095, albeit 500 kilos heavier nearly. Okay, yeah. Is, so what's, what does that make the overall weight of that? Uh, well, it's actually 2.9 2 nearly. Okay. Depending on configuration, but even as a lithium, it doesn't make it that much difference. Yeah. Because the takes some of the other ballads down. So it is slightly heavier, but it is nice also to have that. 250 kilos anywhere in the envelope. Do you know what? I've often thought, although, you know, towing it about is a pain because it's yeah. heavy, yeah. I've often thought that maybe the 1890 could have been a bit heavier, yeah. which would have made it more stable. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Out of, out of an 1890 and an 1895, I'd have the 1890. Right. This is 
It's very refined and everything else. It's lovely to use. I'm just not a fan of taking that up there with you. Yeah. Because it's very handy to be able to have somebody down here operating if need be. Yeah, right. it saves a bit of money. It saves some complications. But that might be just personal choice. But looking at it from an engineer's point of view. Okay. So, from a man that fixes chimneys point of view, yep. the important things to me is what is the outreach of that? You know, how far will that stretch? Because it's the difference between being able to fix that chimney on it the is. back of a house or not being able to fix so, it. The 9.5 9, 9 or 20.95 is basically 9.5 metres of outreach. Yeah. That isn't with the bottom boom fully up though. That's with the bottom boom retracted. Okay, but so you get an extra... You gain about an extra seven, 800 millimetres with the boom retracted because yeah. it's coming in on the slope. Yeah. Now, the beauty of what you've got with that over yours at the moment is you've got a better up and over. Yes. You've got a better up and over reach. Yeah, yeah, because I'm currently losing a lot on my uh, angle because... You are. This first boom... Yeah, goes and, and your, your, your pivot point is lower down. Yeah. Whereas that, when you that's only about halfway up at the moment. You take it up for going up and over the eaves point or whatever, yeah. do, you do gain a lot. So, I, I mean, that, that first boom, what will that do? About... 10 meters how, how high will i get what, to the first? to the for, to yeah. the to point of the bend point for yeah. you for you up and over yeah. no i think it's about nine we'd have to have a look at it nine. so we are still talking uh, to about the ridge line oh yeah absolutely yeah so we'll get you to the ridge and then the fly jib will get you over the ridge that's right so that's it with it fully retracted gives you a maximum outreach yeah so that's at six meters clear yeah then you're going to extend up to this point here so you're looking at a good 12 12 13 meters which, yeah. will, which will clear any ridge. Yes. The track widening and narrowing is exactly the same as yours. All the pins and... Um, the engine is exactly the same engine, apart from it's now in line, not transverse mounted. So that's the Kabuta... It's a Kabuta Z82. Z82, for anyone, you know, who knows about these things. I'm doing it, I'm going to check that, I think it's a Z82. <laughs> but yeah, Kabuta engine's bulletproof. Yeah, yeah. They have proved themselves to be absolutely bulletproof. Well, do you know what? Everybody's using this Kabuta engine. They, yeah, they are. They seem to love they this do. Kabuta engine. Uh, I don't think yours has got the screen on, has it? Yeah, yeah, it's got oh, the yours, Oh, yours has got it on, your, your 1890. I'll have a look at it. I don't know. No, well, you don't. You don't when you're up there either. <laughs> no, but no. it is just a nice touch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I think we've covered this machine, haven't we? Hmm. Uh, all, ba all basket machines, really easy. Incredibly easy to do emergency functions. Right. Even without that. Yeah. If somebody's stuck up there, you can pick this up. Tell us about it, Mark, just in case I ever have this problem myself. I've right. never had to use them. If say you've got somebody up in the up in the cage that becomes incapacitated, yeah. all you would do is switch back to ground controls and you can operate from here. Yeah. If that interval, if you've got something that's more a catastrophic fault, yeah. some machines you need three hands and an arm that's two meters long. You don't with these. What you've got, open the flap. Assuming the machine's set up correctly, there's legs, weight on the legs and it knows it's safe. Yes. Simply operate and everything will just work. Right. Failing that, emergency override, very simple on here, pressing, locking, that's done it. They're now going to operate. Right. If you need to hand pump, again, your hand pump's nice and easy. Hand pump handle is situated there, into the hand pump, everything's close by. Yes, yes. Um, just out of interest then. I was talking to another chap, um, the CMC machine. Yeah. Um, he was saying, if you set up on grass, yeah, and it starts raining and you're fully stretched, and yeah. the machine becomes out of level, yeah, the machine's going to stop operating altogether. It won't let you come back in. It's going to stop. Right. That's that's a very old way of doing it. How does what happens right. here then? All our machines, you put all four legs to the floor once, and it has to see all four legs on the floor yes. and the and the machine be level. Yes. before it'll let you go up. Once you lift the boom out of the rest, you can get some settlement, etc. Mm. And even if you've got one leg coming light, it'll still let you carry on working. The, the bleeper will be going off to let you know that you, you, there's something not quite right, but because it's got a very accurate angle sensor on the chassis, it'll continue working until you get to the preset limit of tilt of inclination. At that point, it will only let you do retracting functions or come back to base. Ah, right, okay. So it doesn't really stop. Like that feature. No, uh, and we found out many years ago that uh, not all machines are used on concrete. They're no. quite often two legs on concrete, two legs on grass. And a bit of settlement's quite common. So as long as it doesn't go, the chassis doesn't go past the, the preset limit, 
it'll still let you work as well. Yeah. Because you don't want to be stopping and having to come down and reset legs every two minutes. Well, I would be quite happy if it allowed you to come back and reset legs, but this particular machine really? wanted somebody on the ground. So between ah, no. Yeah. No, it will always let you retract. He said and that was the safest way. Ooh. Off camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the safest way.